How about Ernie Els? This, you want to talk about whether Furyk's a Hall of Famer or not. Ernie Els is a Hall of Famer now. He had a great year last year. Michael, I'll start with you. You've seen him play a lot this year. Um, you know, Ernie Els has not had a top ten this year. He was the FedEx Cup points leader much of last season, heading into Bridgestone last year. Now he's trying to fight for a spot. He's not in the playoffs like Tiger, uh, like guys like Harrington. What's going wrong with Ernie Els? It is, is it as simple as just the putter with him? Yes. But the funny thing was, before he won Honda last year, we said the same thing. What's going on with Ernie Els? What is the problem? How is Ernie having such a big problem out on the golf course? And then he wins Honda, and we all say to ourselves, there he is, he's back. Ta-da! Ernie Els. Back to where we're used to seeing him and whatnot. And just after that, I mean, it goes away. In, in a sense, uh, he, putting is such a confidence game. Once you start messing around with your putters and with your stances and going, once that confidence goes, it's so much harder to get putting back than anything else, than any other part of your game. When the putting goes, when you walk up, to your golf bag and you see a golfer reach into that golf bag and he's looking at the putter, you can see it in his eyes that he doesn't want that putter in his hand. And once you see that, it's gone. It's just gone. And, and there isn't a psychologist that can help you get it back. You just have to look in that thing and go, I want it back. VJ got hypnotized. He got hypnotized and told himself that he was the greatest putter in the whole world and that's how he won the Masters. Maybe Ernie should try that. I don't know. Peter, what do you think about Ernie Els? Is it just as simple as putting for him? I mean, he's – boy, you watch him swing, and it just doesn't look any different than it has in years past, and that's a, it's a great player that's really fighting uh, to get back to where he was right now. I, I see something in his swing from time to time that that's fragile. I, I think of a few tournaments that he played uh, over in Asia where – and coming down the stretch, he, he so eased into some fairway woods that they half-crossed lakes that should have been easy to uh, uh, carry with a particular club. I, I find him decelerating with his putter. I find him decelerating with full shots sometimes. I think he's playing with a, with a bit of fragility. I think he's playing with an absence, as Michael pointed out, of confidence that starts on the green and has gone into his bag a little bit. Because guys start thinking that they have to hit it closer. And once you start trying to force it like that, that's when what Peter says happens. You know you got too much club in a three-wood or a fairway wood in your hand. So at the top of the swing, you're like, oh, I took this back too far. And then you just start deselling through. And the next thing you know, it goes 30 yards short. And, you know, your caddy's looking at you like, yeah, I, um, should I have told you to crunch that one harder just a little bit? Well, I mean, look, Adam Scott, we just, we've just we seen the reemergence of his game now last year, and he, he talked a couple of years ago about that exact issue, the confidence of the putter, then you start trying to hit the golf ball closer, causes more problems, the trickle-down effect. 